Here I have an AMC V8 timing chain cover and I'm getting ready to do some oiling modifications to it. All of the oiling modifications here are geared for oil flow. You need to have pressure but you need to have flow as well. I took a minute to study it uh, to try to figure out how it works and this is what I came up with. Basically there's a pickup in the sump of your oil pan, picks up the oil, it goes into the block through a passage and then from that passage it uh, enters into the timing chain cover right here. From here it goes into the actual pump housing I guess you'd call it. And then there's a hole down there and it goes to the high pressure side here. From there it uh, goes through your oil filter housing, follows this channel here, gets filtered, exits here. That connects to this hole here, which is mated to this hole and that goes to here and then it feeds the block. If your oil filter were clogged the pressure would overcome this deal here and uh, go directly right to the high pressure side and feed the block. So you'd be feeding your block with unfiltered oil. In studying the old AMC oiling system I'm pretty much amazed at how many 90 degree turns the oil makes. Basically you got a pickup in the uh, sump of your oil pan and then from there it makes a 90 degree turn into the block. So that's one. Then from here into the, the gear housing, that's two. Out of the gear housing, that's three. I'm not even to include the filter, all cars have that. But uh, out of the filter you have a fourth 90. And the cover back to the block is a fifth 90. And actually right in the block is a sixth 90 to get back up to the oil gallery. So I'm going to do anything I can to help out the situation here. Here I'm going to pull the gears out. I'm going to get a new gear set. Inside the uh, oil filter housing is your uh, pressure relief valve and the spring behind it basically sets your oil pressure. An explanation of how this pressure relief valve works is this uh, valve sticks in this tube here with the spring behind it and when the pressure is high enough it pushes the valve back and then the oil can flow into this passage and then it comes out this hole onto the low pressure side of the pump gears and gets recirculated. This housing was kind of clean and uh, I took this apart. There's just a ton of sludge in there. Just goes to show you that every single piece has to be taken apart and cleaned. This setup here will come apart as well and be cleaned. And if I can, if there's enough material there, I'll uh, radius that 90 in there. Here's a look with the gasket on the timing chain cover. Not a whole lot of room for improvement there, but there is a little bit. The big find on the internet was this mod is basically you want to equalize these two holes. This top one was looks like it was cast and the bottom one was drilled. So you kind of want to match the size of that bottom one to this top one. Before I do that I'll put some tape on it to try to protect the uh, machine surfaces. Don't want to nick those. Here we got our duct taped up. And I was going to show you guys this. I found a uh, cartridge mandrel with an eighth inch shank. For a Dremel tool, and I was doing some of the uh, polishing on my heads with this. It's adjustable speed, and there's a lot more control with it. So I'm going to start the show here by just opening up this D hole to the intended size. There's some flash on there, and I might uh, knock off some other flash on this casting too. using a narrow 80. And the lighting's terrible in here, but I'm going to bevel this a little bit. Just getting rid of some of that flash that was in there. I'm not going to get too carried away with uh, removing material. Just want to oval out that hole some. Decided to go in with a longer mandrel and sandpaper roll. Probably the safest way to do this. The sandpaper roll worked pretty good there. And 
if you look at it from the top, you can see that my holes are pretty well equalized. I think I'm going to leave her like that. And while I was in there, I just had, went ahead and laid back these uh, other openings to the die chem line. So here's the high pressure side coming up to this 90 here and then coming into the block. And I'm going to try to at least chamfer that edge a little bit instead of it being a sharp machine 90. Not sure how well you can see this, but uh, I got a little bit on it there. I actually went from both sides. And inside there I can see uh, like a parting line or something. So I'm going to go ahead and blend that with the, uh, the long mandrel and sandpaper roll. Here's a look at her blended in. Here's the oil pump gasket on the timing chain cover. And I went ahead and filled that whole area in there with a Sharpie. See, it's actually a huge area. Then if you lay the gasket on the oil filter housing, you can see that whole area is already opened up. I'm not going to take all that black there, but I'm going to lay it back a little bit. I don't think it's going to hurt with the, uh, the setup we got here. This cover is a little thin right in this area here, so I'm going to stay away from there and uh, just work in the middle of this a little bit. This is what I came up with uh, for that. I wanted the oil to be hitting that filter housing at a straight angle. And I'll just finish it with a 320. I got the rest of the oil filter housing apart here and uh, Here's where that uh, oil filter bypass is. And here are the pieces that go with it. It has this funky uh, fiber disc that I guess is kind of hard to come by. Before we go any farther here, I'm just going to reiterate that I got this uh, pressure relief spring out. Um, kind of had to do that because this valve here pokes into this channel where I'm going to have my uh, sandpaper roll. And if you look in there, you see a ridge. I'll blend that with the... Uh, the long mandrel once again. I'm also looking at this area uh, after the oil filter. Bunch of rough stuff in there, so I'll blend all that. I'll see if I can a little bit of a chamfer on that one too. Here's a look at the finished oil filter housing. Probably pretty tough to tell on camera, but there's a nice smooth transition down there. You can see all the grit in here. This piece uh, clearly is need to be cleaned up along with the timing chain cover. Here's what the oil filter mount looks like after uh, cleaning it up. There's a little lip in there that had to come out. Really opened it up. Here's a look from this direction. To finish this video off, I was going to show you guys some cross buffs. Got these uh, from Summit. Here we have a, a medium and a super fine. Got this from Headbytes porting videos. It's actually uh, a good way to leave a finish on aluminum. And I think I'm going to use the inside of this cover here just to show you what kind of finish you can get with these things. And I got the, the mandrel from Summit as well. I'm screwing my medium here. I could have got this in a bigger diameter. Here I got my fine on. We'll see what this does. You can see it's a really fast way to leave a nice finish on aluminum. I'm really liking those things. Well that's about it for this video. I gotta get all the stuff cleaned up now and then uh, get the oil pump ordered. Thanks for watching.